have you ever played a game and the ending just left you so mystified to the point where, not that you can't understand it, but you just don't understand everything, and you, you can understand the basis of what's going on, and it just leaves you like completely, I guess, humbled or uh, awestruck, and you actually sit there and think for hours about the repercussions of the ending to this game and what it could possibly mean in different scenarios. Uh, well, Dragon's Dogma, at least for me, and I'm sure many others, had this effect uh, on me based on its ending. I'm going to try my best to, uh, I guess, explain up to the point how this would make sense with the ending. So obviously if you guys haven't played the game or you haven't got to the ending yet, spoilers, don't watch any more of this video. From the get-go, the very beginning of a game, a dragon comes, takes your heart, and you're proclaimed arisen, and you gotta beat this dragon, or so it seems. And throughout the entire game, most of the game, you are trying to beat the dragon, get your heart back. And once you accomplish that, you there's more to the game after you beat the dragon. I know, shocking. Uh, once you accomplish that, you find out that there's this, there's this cycle of killing the dragon, finding a new person to kill the dragon, and a person to take their place as god, pretty much. Now, uh, I'm going to try and explain this. Once you beat the dragon and you do a certain amount of stuff, you come to, uh, I think it was called like the Sensual, or I'll just call him God for short, who uh, pretty much just reigned over everything and blah 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 life, blah 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 meaning, all that stuff. And the Arisen was chosen by the Sensual. He used the dragon to choose the uh, Arisen guy to come and challenge him so he could, I guess, for other lack of a better term, take a break, and, or not take a break, just stop doing the God job. Uh, and if you failed, you would become the Duke in Dragon's Dogma or the Dragon's Forged in Dragon's Dogma. The Duke uh, made a deal with the Dragon. If you've played the game, you beat the Dragon, you know what I'm talking about. He made a deal with the Dragon where uh, he sacrificed his loved one so he could be immortal and the Dragon would uh, not kill him, pretty much. And so that was the Duke's story. The Dragon's Forged story is most likely, since his heart is still gone, he tried to fight the dragon, failed, and uh, wasn't killed or was left alive somehow, and uh, that was that. And how I know, and for those of you who haven't played it, or those who have and you're still confused, it's true because at the end, the duke aged immediately, his heart was returned to him, and the dragon's forge guy just turned to dust because uh, his heart was returned to him as well, and he was, what, like a thousand years old, so it's just straight to dust, no, no point for him. Now, once all that is said and done, you approach the god character, and uh, he gives you options where you can just turn back, go to your life, or actually challenge him to find out more meaning. And if you turn back, you're just yourself, you are with your loved one, or your uh, love interest, and your family, or not family, but your townspeople. And if you do that, then the god character just says, you know what, uh, be happy, I'll wait for the next Arisen to come challenge me. And uh, if you decide to fight the god or find more meaning, uh, you pretty much just you fight him. It's actually pretty easy. And you find out that there's this entire cycle where the Arisen takes out the god character. Or not takes out, but he releases him from his duty. Uh, the Arisen becomes the god character. And then from there, the god character creates a dragon or... The person that approaches the god character, and I know this is confusing, bear with me. The person that approaches the uh, god character and doesn't want to uh, do it anymore becomes the dragon himself. So if you just let yourself be killed without even attacking the god character in the battle, you'll just become the dragon, the enemy of the game. And so you just go out and find another Arisen. So it's this huge cycle that just plays with your mind. So... There's many possibilities. Uh, the god character is overtaken by the Arisen. That Arisen becomes the god character. A dragon is created. He finds the Arisen. And the Arisen lets the dragon, or fights the dragon, or makes a deal with him. And then beyond that, you go to the god character. And it's just a never-ending cycle, never-ending loop. And it, it, it's, it makes sense, but there's, you know, there's certain things, like every other never-ending loop they have questions with. Like, why is there a cycle to begin with? Why does god need to be replaced? Why does the duke... Uh, why does a person who makes a deal with a dragon have to be the duke? And it, it just, it, it's so mind-blowing to the point where you're like, wow, I gotta sit back and appreciate this. And uh, lastly, if you defeat the god character and you become god, 
and you're sick of being God because all you can do in the game is just go down to your hometown and Grand Soren and just be this invisible creature who can annoy some people, and that's pretty much it. You can't interact with anyone. You can just pretty much explore those two areas. So what you do then is you take a uh, weapon called the God's Bane that you got from the God character you killed, and you use it on yourself now that you're God. And this is where the people started to part ways on the theory of what happened. But pretty much you stab yourself with this God's Bane weapon, and you fall down to Earth or uh, Grants or Grancies or whatever you want to call it. And uh, your pawn follows you, and your pawn is your accomplice throughout the entire game. And you pretty much just fall down into the ocean, and your pawn comes up in your body, and the love interest approaches your body with the pawn's, I guess, soul in it. And that's pretty much the end of the game. Uh, but now this is where people diverged on this theory. People are like, okay, well, as God, and you stab yourself, you broke the cycle, so there's no more. Uh, central or god cycle, no more dragons, no more risen, nothing, it's all said and done, humans will create their own will to strive and make a future. And then there's others who say you had to do that to become god, and I'm gonna, I disagree with that because you became god once you beat the god character, the central, and it pretty much, the mission objective before, or you know, before you stab yourself to start a new game, it's said, uh, serve here as central for forever and eternity, or until, you know, another Arisen comes up. So that's pretty much that game, uh, until you start a new game plus by stabbing yourself and starting a new. But then there's people who say, well, when you start a new game plus, the pawn is pretty much you in the new game plus, and you get uh, attacked by a dragon who gets his heart taken again, and your pawn that was you goes out on this journey to get the dragon, and again, this whole infinite loop cycle that just leaves you stunned, leaves you breathless, or something like that, and I have not experienced that, honestly. Uh, not not even the Mass Effect 3 ending, honestly, because there was the point where the indoctrination theory could have happened, and then there was just this crappy ending, so it wasn't really... Uh, and joyful to the point where it was just, you know, frustrating, you didn't know. But in this Dragon's Dogma ending, you know everything that is going on. You may not understand everything, but it's just so mind-blowing that I don't even think I, I could, I've experienced in my gaming uh, life, I suppose. Not even Kingdom Hearts. Now, I'm not getting me wrong, Kingdom Hearts is an amazing game, has great endings, but not to the point where Dragon's Dogma makes you stop, think, question, and just makes you think so many possibilities, but I, I really you have to give credit to the developer of the game. They did a great job on the ending and the story, and how it was just this never-ending loop. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's my, uh, I guess, rant or thoughts on the ending, so uh, thanks everyone for keeping here with, what, 20 minutes, or not 20 minutes, uh, 8 minutes. But uh, yeah, everyone, uh, pay attention to my review for Dragon's Dogma. It will be up soon, and it is definitely worth getting, I can tell you right now. Thanks everyone for watching.